What would you do if you found sexy lingerie in your spouse's car, but they swear they're innocent? This man thought his wife was cheating, but the shocking truth will blow your mind. Returning home from work in Phoenix, I stopped by the post office. As usual, my mailbox was stuffed with junk mail and bills. I flipped through them quickly, tossing most into the trash can next to the table. Between a visa statement and a bill from Kiko, there was an envelope with the smooth handwriting I knew too well. For over a year, I'd been receiving one letter a month from her. She had figured out that my mail was being forwarded from my old address, so she sent the letters there to be forwarded to me. I met Linda at a wedding reception. A guy I worked with was getting married, and the whole office had been invited to the wedding. After the ceremony, everyone headed to the reception, which was held at a fancy place called Sunset Garden Hall. I'd been there for about an hour when a tall brunette walked in. She caught everyone's attention, especially mine. But she wasn't alone, so I pushed her out of my mind, well, not completely. The hall wasn't large, so she was always within sight. Another hour passed, and I noticed she seemed to be growing more and more upset with her companion. Right after the bride and groom cut the cake, I got up to head to the bathroom. On my way, I passed the table where the brunette was sitting. Just as I walked by, I heard her mutter, bastard. No matter how quietly she said it, it sounded like it was directed at me. I turned and asked, excuse me. She blushed and said, no, not you. This worthless guy I came with. All he's done since we got here is drink. I've been trying to get him onto the dance floor, but he won't budge. Now he's abandoned me completely. Though maybe I deserve it for agreeing to go on a blind date. Relieved to know she wasn't talking about me, I continued to the bathroom. When I returned, I noticed her sitting there, tapping her feet as the orchestra started playing again. On a whim, I got up, walked over, and asked her to dance. She smiled and said yes, and that's how it all started, a whirlwind romance that led to our marriage just three months later. Linda was a brilliant systems engineer working for a major tech company in Phoenix. She tried to explain her job to me a few times, but honestly, most of it went right over my head. I'm not exactly tech-savvy. I know how to check my email, browse the web, and that's about it. I work as a heavy equipment technician, and I'm pretty good at what I do. We both worked hard, and soon enough, we saved enough money to make a down payment on a house. Our marriage seemed perfect, at least, that's what I thought. I was head over heels in love with her, and she definitely seemed to feel the same way. But things changed in the seventh year of our marriage. When it started, I can't pinpoint exactly, but I'm sure it had been going on for some time before I noticed. Linda always went out with her co-workers on Friday nights, grabbing drinks and hanging out. Usually, she was back by 9 p.m. I didn't pay much attention when it stretched to 9.30, then 10, and then 10.30. It was only later that I realized this wasn't normal. Then, she started staying late at work a couple of times a week, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. She said it was because of a massive new contract her company had secured. She explained that the deadlines were tight and management hadn't prepared well enough for such a big order, so everyone was being asked to work overtime. I asked, what's taking them so long to make decisions? Can't they just hire more people? They want to be sure the contract will be long term before making any big moves like that, she said. It'll only be for a couple of months. But, a couple of months turned into almost a year. When I started complaining about it, she always calmly reassured me. It shouldn't be much longer, babe. I know it's rough, but trust me, I'm not enjoying it either. One night, she called me while I was at the gym. She explained that her co-worker Anne, who was supposed to cover a shift, had been in an accident, so Linda had to work late. The next morning over breakfast, I casually asked, how's and doing? Linda looked confused for a moment before responding, oh, right. And, she's in pretty bad shape. She's got both legs in traction and broke her hip. She's going to be out of work for a while. 
That's awful. Does she have someone taking care of her? Yeah, Linda replied. Her sister flew in to help. Poor thing has had the worst luck lately, first, her boyfriend broke up with her during their vacation, then the airline lost her luggage, and now this accident. So you'll be working overtime on Wednesdays now, too? Yeah, probably, and maybe an extra Friday or two. That's when I started to really think about everything. Before, her overtime was just irritating, but now it felt suspicious. I couldn't shake the confusion on her face when I asked about Anne. It was like she'd forgotten her own story and had to make something up quickly. Could she be lying about these late nights? Then, I remembered the Friday nights with her co-workers and how they kept getting later. And I couldn't forget the time I found those suitcases in the trunk of her car. One Sunday afternoon, I was doing routine maintenance on her car, changing the oil, adding washer fluid, and decided to rotate the tires. When I opened the trunk to get the spare, I found two suitcases. Curious, I unzipped one. It was full of clothes I'd never seen before. The other suitcase contained lingerie, high heels, and sexy outfits I knew she wasn't wearing for me. I didn't know who Linda was dressing up for, but it certainly wasn't me. I realized her story about working late was probably just a cover. There was no other reason for her to have multiple outfit changes and sexy lingerie in the trunk unless she was seeing someone else. At that point, I couldn't ignore the signs anymore. But I didn't confront her right away. It was the holiday season, and things were already stressful enough. Instead, I decided to wait until after New Year's to figure things out. However, I didn't have to wait long. Linda's company had their annual holiday party planned for a Wednesday night, and she was really looking forward to it. At the last minute, I got called in to handle an emergency at work, so I couldn't go with her. She was upset, no, furious, that I wouldn't be able to join her. We had a huge argument, with her yelling, you never make time for me, and me snapping back, now you know how I feel when you work late all the time. I promised her I'd try to wrap up in time to at least make an appearance at the party, but that didn't seem to calm her down much. On the day of the party, I worked as fast as I could. The event started at 7 p.m., and by busting my butt, I managed to get home, shower, and arrive by 9. When I walked into Magnolia Event Hall, where the party was being held, I immediately spotted Linda, locked in a passionate kiss with some guy. People around them were clapping, laughing, and yelling, get a room, you too, and take it to a motel. It felt like the air was sucked out of the room. I turned around and left, walking out before anyone noticed I had been there. On the drive home, I couldn't stop thinking about what had happened. Why had she kissed him? Who was this guy? I tried to understand what had gone so wrong between us. I had always treated her like a queen, helped around the house, never forgot her birthday or our anniversaries, cooked dinner at least twice a week, and never looked at another woman. So what happened? The only thing I could think of was the weight I had gained over the years, about 25 pounds since we got married. Was that the reason? Had I become less attractive to her? But in the end, it didn't matter. What I saw at the party meant one thing, our marriage was over. I loved Linda deeply, but not enough to want to fight for her. Even if I won her back from this guy, would I have to do it again the next time? No. It was clear to me that our relationship was broken beyond repair. But I made one decision, I needed to lose the weight. Not for her, but for myself. I wanted to feel better, look better, and be ready for when I eventually started dating again. I also decided not to get a divorce right away. I figured as long as she was busy with her lover, we could maintain the status quo and avoid the hassle of divorce. That night, when Linda came home from the party, she was in a great mood, way too cheerful considering what I had just witnessed. She even wanted to make love. Normally, I'd jump at the chance, but this time, I hesitated. I was curious if I could feel any difference. Was I getting the leftovers from her earlier escapade? Surprisingly, nothing seemed different. 
But still, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had been second in line for far too long. The next day, I decided to make a change. I signed up for a membership at Phoenix Fitness Club and met with a personal trainer. He set me up with a workout plan, and I started going to the gym on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. After a few weeks, I began running on the weekends too. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays became my running days, and Sundays were my only rest days. As the months went by, my relationship with Linda stayed the same. She continued acting like nothing was wrong, like she was still madly in love with me. She worked late two or three nights a week, and I stopped asking questions. I had my own routine now, and honestly, I didn't care anymore. After about two months of working out, I lost 20 pounds and was feeling better than I had in years. Even some of my co-workers noticed the difference. Sarah and Amanda, two women I worked with, complimented me on my progress. One day, Sarah even asked, what's inspired the new look? I'm just trying to get back in shape, I said casually. And what does Linda think about all this effort, she teased. We've got an understanding, I said, dodging the question. Oh, an open marriage? Sarah joked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, you could say that, I replied with a smirk. Well, if you're looking for a little fun, let me know, Sarah said, catching me completely off guard. We had flirted before, but I never thought it would lead anywhere. Her tone was serious this time. What the hell, I thought. Why not? I knew Linda was working late that Thursday, so I asked Sarah, are you free on Thursday? I am now, she smiled. What do you have in mind? It's up to you. All right, she said. I'll think of something. Pick me up at 6.30, casual dress. When Thursday rolled around, I showed up at Sarah's place at 6.30, just like we planned. She answered the door in a robe, and for a second, I thought I might be too early. Am I interrupting? I asked, unsure. No, she said with a sly smile. I'm already dressed for the occasion. With that, she opened the robe to reveal a lacy set of lingerie, stockings, and high heels. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I think we'll start with dessert and skip straight to the main course, she teased, leading me to the bedroom. Sarah wasted no time, and what happened next was unlike anything I had experienced in my marriage. She was bold, unashamed, and completely in control. We didn't leave her apartment that night. When it was over, I was exhausted but strangely satisfied. Sarah walked me to the door and gave me a lingering kiss. So, when can we do this again, she asked. I'm available Tuesdays and Thursdays, I said, still catching my breath. Perfect, she grinned. I'm free on both those days. On the way home, I made a quick stop at Jax's sports bar, where I knew a few guys from work hung out. I figured if I smelled like beer when I got home, Linda wouldn't ask questions. I needed to cover my tracks, especially after what had just happened with Sarah. When I finally got home, Linda was sitting in the living room, still wide awake. Where were you? she asked, not suspicious, just curious. After work, I went out with the guys to shoot some pool. Hope that's okay, I replied casually. I was hoping you didn't drink too much because I want you, she said, standing up and walking toward me with a look that meant one thing. I wasn't expecting this, but somehow, I managed to fulfill her request. It wasn't easy, but I got through it. I quickly realized I'd have to be more careful in the future. It slipped my mind that Linda often came home energized after her late nights, and I needed to keep some energy for her too. For the next six weeks, Sarah and I continued our dates, meeting twice a week whenever Linda was supposedly working late. It was fun, intense, and thrilling in a way my marriage hadn't been in years. But then, one evening after a particularly wild night, Sarah said something unexpected. Jerry, she began, sitting up in bed. This is our last time. What? I asked, taken aback. What do you mean? 
I'm passing the baton to Amanda, she said, as if it was the most natural thing in the world. She's been waiting for her turn. Wait, don't I get a say in this? I asked, confused. Of course, she smiled. But Amanda and I agreed that this is my last time with you. You're a married man, Jerry, and I can't afford to get too involved. There's no future here for me, and I need to move on before it gets too complicated. But Amanda's all yours if you want her. I was speechless for a moment. Does Amanda really want to take over? I asked, still trying to wrap my head around what was happening. Trust me, she does, Sarah replied. And she won't wait long. Just ask her, or she might come to you first. That's exactly what happened. The very next week, Amanda approached me in the office. I heard you have some free time on Tuesdays and Thursdays now, she said with a playful grin. Mind if I take those nights? I couldn't believe how easily this was unfolding. My first night with Amanda was almost a repeat of my first with Sarah. We didn't leave her place, and what happened between us was more than I could have expected. There was, however, one big difference between the two women, Amanda had a taste for things Sarah hadn't been into. She was more adventurous, more daring, and she made it clear that she wasn't interested in anything traditional. My affair with Amanda lasted for five intense weeks before she, like Sarah, ended it. I'm getting too attached, she admitted one night as we lay in bed. I can't keep this up with a married man. If you were single, things might be different. Just like that, it was over with Amanda too. She was fun, she was wild, but like Sarah, she didn't want anything more than the excitement of an affair. Over the next eight months, I found myself dating and sleeping with different women. None of the flings lasted more than a few weeks, but I wasn't looking for anything long-term anyway. My situation with Linda remained unchanged. She continued working late, and I continued my secret meetings. If it hadn't been for one strange coincidence, things might have stayed the same forever. It was a Wednesday, and I was finishing up a workout at Phoenix Fitness Club. After my session, I headed to the locker room to shower. As I was drying off, I overheard a conversation. I recognized the voice immediately, it was the guy Linda had been kissing at the holiday party. He walked in with two other guys and started changing into their gym clothes. My heart raced as I listened, trying to piece together what was being said without making it obvious I was eavesdropping. How's it going with that woman you were with at the holiday party? Still seeing her, one of his friends asked. The guy, Mark, I remembered, laughed. Man, I keep telling you, we're just friends. I'm not trying to get her into bed. Yeah, sure, the second guy chimed in sarcastically. I'd love to be friends with her too. Hell, I'd love to be more than friends. Mark sighed. Forget it. She's too hung up on her husband. You'd think the guy was made of gold with how she talks about him. Come on, Mark, the first guy pressed. You were all over her at the party. Don't tell me you two haven't hooked up. Mark shook his head. She was mad at her husband for not showing up, that's all. She had a few too many drinks and said, if Jerry's not going to kiss me under the mistletoe, you will. So yeah, I kissed her, but that was it. Honestly, she's so obsessed with her husband that no one else stands a chance. The second guy chuckled. So you're saying all that overtime and late night work isn't an excuse to be with you? Mark gave him a pointed look. Nope. Believe it or not, she's been working all those extra shifts to buy her husband a boat for his birthday. Most of what we talk about is her asking me about boat engines, fish finders, and other gear. She's been working every minute she can to make sure she can afford it. I just hope he knows how lucky he is to have her. The conversation turned to basketball, and the three of them left the locker room, leaving me sitting there, towel wrapped around me, staring at the wall. My mind was racing. What had I done? I had completely misread the situation. Linda wasn't cheating on me with Mark. She wasn't sneaking around. She wasn't betraying me. 
All this time, she had been working late to save up money to buy me a boat, a surprise for my birthday. And what had I done in return? I cheated on her. I had multiple affairs behind her back because I thought she was being unfaithful. But she wasn't. She was loyal, dedicated, and committed to me in a way I hadn't been to her. The only saving grace was that I had never thrown my affairs in her face. I hadn't confronted her, accusing her of cheating, and I hadn't used my infidelity as a weapon. But still, I had betrayed her. I had ruined everything. I sat there for a long time, trying to figure out what to do next. I couldn't bring myself to tell her the truth. How could I confess that I had been sleeping with other women for months, thinking she was doing the same? I was too much of a coward to face that. So, I did what cowards do, I ran. The next day, I went to my boss and told him I needed to transfer out of Phoenix. I've had some personal issues with my wife, and I think it's best if I move on, I said, keeping it vague. I love working here, but if there's any opportunity at another location, I'd like to take it. My boss picked up the phone and made a quick call. Within an hour, I was packing my things for a new job in Denver. The following day, while Linda was at work, I loaded everything I owned into my pickup truck. At the last minute, I scribbled a short note and left it on the kitchen table, I'm so sorry. It was all I could bring myself to say. I knew it was a terrible thing to do, just disappearing like that, but over time, I figured Linda would move on. She'd file for divorce as an abandoned wife, and maybe she'd find someone who deserved her. That was 14 months ago. Not a single day has gone by without me thinking about Linda, about what we had, about how stupid I was to ruin it all. I buried myself in work, taking on as many hours as I could to keep my mind off everything. But the nights were always the worst. I had no one to talk to, no one to come home to. The loneliness gnawed at me, even though I knew it was my own fault. At first, I tried going to the bar after work to drown my sorrows, but that didn't last long. The hangovers were rough, and the beer was undoing all the progress I'd made at the gym. So instead, I threw myself back into fitness. I joined a new gym in Denver and started running again, hoping to clear my head. After about six months, I noticed that some women at the gym had started paying attention to me. I hadn't made any moves, though. My mind was still full of thoughts about Linda, and I wasn't ready to let anyone else in. Not yet. One afternoon, I was flipping through my mail when I found a letter from Kiko, informing me I had a credit on my account. I tore it up and tossed it in the trash. Then I saw the latest letter from Linda. I had been getting one every month since I left, but I never opened them. This time, I picked it up, brought it to my nose, and imagined I could still smell her perfume on it. Then I threw it in the trash, just like the others. Is that it? A voice said from behind me. I froze and turned around. There she was, Linda, standing in the doorway, looking directly at me. Hello, Jerry, she said with a calm but stern expression. Long time no see. I stood there, completely speechless. I hadn't expected to see Linda again, let alone have her show up here in Denver. I couldn't even run, she was blocking the doorway, and besides, where would I go? Cat got your tongue, she asked, raising an eyebrow. I'm not surprised. You were never much of a talker. You left me with two words and no explanation. I've spent the last fourteen months trying to figure out what you were sorry for. I still don't know. You could have saved yourself an extra word and just said goodbye. It would have hurt less. I finally managed to speak, how did you find me? I'm not telling, she replied coolly. If you run again, I might have to use the same method. I'm not giving you another chance to cover your tracks. The point is, I'm here, and I'm not leaving until I know everything. Just not here. Let's go to my place. Reluctantly, I followed her out to her car, my mind racing the whole time. I didn't know what I was going to say or how I would explain myself. A part of me still loved her deeply, 
but another part felt like there was no way to fix this. When we arrived at her place, she gestured for me to sit on the couch. I felt like a condemned man waiting for his sentence. So, for heaven's sake, she began, crossing her arms. What made you think I was cheating on you? I took a deep breath and finally confessed. You had all the classic signs of a cheating wife. Out of nowhere, you started working late when you never used to. You seemed to throw yourself at me in bed, either because you felt guilty, or because your lover got you all worked up and I had to deal with the aftermath. Those nights out with your co-workers got longer and longer. Then, I found suitcases in your trunk full of sexy clothes I'd never seen you wear. And on top of all that, I saw you making out with Mark at the Christmas party while everyone was cheering for you to get a room. What was I supposed to think? Linda sighed deeply, shaking her head. You poor, foolish man. Why didn't you just talk to me? Talk to you? I shot back. Everything pointed to you cheating. How was I supposed to believe anything else? The suitcases you found in my car weren't mine. They belonged to Anne, my co-worker. Remember I told you she had an accident? The airline lost her luggage, and when they finally found it, she was already in the hospital. She asked me to pick it up for her and store it in my trunk until she was out. As for working late, it was real. I was working those extra shifts to buy you that damn fishing boat you always talked about. I even kept the receipts, you could have asked to see them. I sat there, stunned, as she continued. You're right about one thing, the extra sex was because I felt guilty. But not for cheating. I felt guilty for leaving you alone so much while I worked all those extra hours. I knew it bothered you, and I was trying to make it up to you the only way I knew how. And the Christmas party? I asked, feeling the weight of my own assumptions crush me. I saw you kissing Mark like you were madly in love with him. Linda gave a small, humorless laugh. I had too much to drink, Jerry. You promised you'd show up, and when you didn't, I was hurt. I grabbed Mark and kissed him under the mistletoe because I was mad at you for not being there. That's all it was, a stupid, drunk mistake. After that, we went back to our own tables, and he didn't even dance with me the whole night. It meant nothing. I stared at her, the truth sinking in deeper with every word. I didn't leave because of you, I said quietly. I left because of what I did in response. What do you mean, she asked, her face tensing. I hesitated, but I couldn't keep the truth from her any longer. I thought you were cheating, so I started sleeping with other women. Sarah, Amanda, and a few others. I convinced myself that if you were being unfaithful, I needed to stay even with you. But when I overheard Mark at the gym and realized you hadn't done anything wrong, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't look at you, knowing what I had done. So I left. I figured you deserved better than a cheating husband. Linda's face turned pale, and she was silent for a long moment. Finally, she spoke, her voice shaking slightly. So, you cheated on me because you thought I was cheating on you? Yes, I admitted, feeling the weight of my actions crush me. And once you found out I wasn't, you couldn't face me anymore. Exactly, I whispered. She shook her head slowly. So if you hadn't overheard that conversation at the gym, you would have kept sleeping around and never told me? I don't know, I admitted. Maybe. Linda looked at me for another minute before asking, Did you love me, Jerry? Or was this just a way for you to get back at me? I loved you then, and I still love you, I said, my voice barely audible. The only reason I stayed, even when I thought you were cheating, was because I loved you too much to leave. She sighed, her anger softening slightly. I need you, Jerry. I've spent the last fourteen months searching for answers, wondering what I did wrong. Now I know I didn't do anything. I still love you, and I want you to come home with me. If you can't come home, I'll move here. But one way or another, I want to be with you. I don't know if I can, I said, shaking my head. 
being with you will remind me every day of what I did. I can't look you in the eye knowing that. But you could do it when you thought I had cheated on you, she asked, her voice growing sharper again. I nodded slowly. Yes, because I thought we were even. Linda took a deep breath, her eyes locking with mine. Then come home, Jerry, because we are even. I stared at her, my mind racing, trying to make sense of what she had just said. What do you mean, we're even? I asked, my heart sinking as I anticipated her response. Linda sighed and looked down at the floor before meeting my eyes again. You were right, Jerry. You just didn't have all the facts. On those nights when I told you I was working late. I wasn't always working. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. So, you were cheating on me? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Yes, she admitted, her voice trembling. It started one night when I was at the office late with Mark. We were finishing up a project when something just, clicked. We were talking, and before I knew it, we were kissing. It wasn't planned, it just happened. After that, almost every time we worked late, we ended up sneaking off together. Sometimes it was just in the office, sometimes in the back of the storage room. I didn't love him, Jerry. It was just, the excitement, the thrill of something forbidden. I don't know why I let it happen, but it did. I felt a surge of anger and betrayal rise in me, but at the same time, a strange sense of relief. In a twisted way, knowing that she had cheated on me too made me feel less guilty about what I had done. How long did it go on? I asked, my voice tight with emotion. A few months, she admitted. But it wasn't what you think. I never kissed him outside of work except for that one time at the Christmas party. And even then, it was more out of anger at you than because I wanted him. After that night, I realized how far things had gone, and I broke it off. Mark tried to keep things going, but I couldn't. I loved you, Jerry. I still do. That's why I stopped. I sat there, absorbing the weight of her words. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Because I thought you'd leave me, she said, her voice cracking. I thought you'd walk away if you knew the truth. But I was wrong. You left anyway. And now, I'm here, telling you everything, because I don't want to lose you again. We've both made mistakes, Jerry. Huge, unforgivable mistakes. But I'm willing to forgive you if you're willing to forgive me. Please, let's put this behind us and start over. I shook my head, still struggling to wrap my mind around everything. I don't know if I can, Linda. What if it happens again? What if you decide I'm not enough for you? What if I'm never enough? It won't happen again, she said firmly, taking a step closer to me. These last fourteen months without you have been hell. I've realized what I lost, and I will never do anything to jeopardize us again. I'm not asking you to forget everything that happened, but I am asking you to try to move forward with me. We can be better. We can be stronger. We've already survived the worst of it. I looked at her, my heart torn between anger, sadness, and the undeniable love I still felt for her. Could we really start over? Could we rebuild what we had? I wasn't sure, but a part of me wanted to try. Okay, I said finally. I'll come home. But we need to be honest with each other from now on. No more secrets. No more lies. Linda nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I promise. No more lies. Just us, starting fresh. I stood up, and she wrapped her arms around me tightly, as if afraid I'd slip away again. We stood there in silence for a long time, holding each other. The road ahead wasn't going to be easy, but for the first time in a long time, I felt like we had a chance. A few days later, I went back to the gym. I had been replaying everything in my mind, trying to make sense of it all. As I was finishing my workout, I saw Mark walk in. He didn't notice me at first, but after a few minutes, he glanced in my direction and did a double take. 
He walked over, looking unsure. Do I know you? he asked, squinting as if trying to place me. No, but you knew my wife, I said, keeping my voice calm, though I could feel the tension rising in my chest. Mark's face went blank for a moment, then recognition flashed across his features. Wait, you're, you're Jerry, right? Linda's husband. That's right, I said. You had an affair with her. Mark's eyes widened. Whoa, hold on. I wouldn't call it an affair. We kissed, but that's all. I swear to you, man, it never went further than that. She never gave me a chance. Believe me, I tried, but she was hung up on you the whole time. I stared at him, trying to process what he was saying. So you're telling me nothing else happened? Even when you were working late together? Mark shook his head. Look, I won't lie, I wanted something to happen. I liked her, and yeah, we kissed, but she always stopped it before it went any further. That Christmas party kiss was the only real kiss we shared. The rest was just, nothing. I felt a strange mix of emotions, relief, confusion, and anger all at once. She told me it was more than just kissing, I said, my voice tight. I don't know why she'd say that, but it's not true, Mark said firmly. I wanted it, but she never gave me the opportunity. As much as I wanted to punch him, I realized there was no point. Linda had made her choice to lie to me about the extent of their relationship, and Mark, for all his flaws, wasn't the real problem. The issue was between me and her. Thanks for the honesty, I said, turning away before he could respond. I didn't need to hear any more. I never told Linda about my conversation with Mark. There was no point in reopening that wound. She had lied to me to make it seem like we were even, to try to fix things between us. And in some twisted way, it worked. We went back to our lives, trying to rebuild the trust we had shattered. Linda bought me the base boat she'd been saving up for, and I named it Mark's Mistake as a private joke, though I never told her the full reason behind it. Every time we went out on that boat, it served as a reminder of how fragile relationships can be and how much effort it takes to keep them afloat. Life slowly returned to a new normal for Linda and me. We moved back into our home together in Phoenix, and for a while, everything felt tentative, like we were both walking on eggshells. But as the months passed, we began to rebuild the trust that had been shattered. It wasn't easy, and we had our moments where the weight of the past threatened to pull us apart again, but we made it through. Linda no longer worked late, at least not without giving me a heads up beforehand, and I made an effort to be more present at home. We had both changed in ways we hadn't expected, but we were committed to each other now in a way we hadn't been before. The scars from our mistakes didn't fade completely, but we learned to live with them. It was a quiet, unspoken understanding between us that our marriage had been given a second chance, and neither of us wanted to waste it. The boat she bought me became a symbol of that new beginning. Every time we went out on Mark's mistake, it was a reminder of how easily things could have gone another way. And though the name always made me smile to myself, I never explained it to her. I continued working out at Phoenix Fitness Club, keeping myself in shape, not just physically but mentally. The gym became my refuge, a place where I could let go of the stresses and complexities of our relationship. Every time I saw Mark there, we gave each other a quick nod of acknowledgement, but we never spoke again. There was no need. Whatever had happened between him and Linda was in the past, and it was better left there. After about a year of being back together, something unexpected happened. One weekend, Linda and I decided to take the boat out for a long day on the lake. It was one of those perfect days, blue skies, calm water, and a gentle breeze. We packed a picnic, some fishing gear, and headed out early in the morning. At one point during the trip, as we sat on the boat eating sandwiches, Linda turned to me and said, Jerry, I've been thinking about something. I raised an eyebrow, curious. What's that? I want us to renew our vows, she said, her voice soft but steady. I know we've been through hell, and I know we can't erase the past, 
but I want to reaffirm our commitment to each other. I want a fresh start, officially. Her words hit me harder than I expected. I had never been one for grand gestures or romantic ceremonies, but the idea of publicly committing to each other again, of wiping the slate as clean as we could, it felt like the right thing to do. Are you sure? I asked, though I already knew the answer. More than anything, she replied. I don't need anything big, just something small, just the two of us. Maybe out here on the lake. This place has become important to us, you know. It's where we figured things out. I nodded, my chest tightening. Yeah, it is. And so, a few months later, we renewed our vows on the lake, just the two of us, with the wind in our hair and the sun glistening on the water. It wasn't a big, flashy ceremony, no guests, no reception, just us and the quiet peace that came with knowing we were moving forward together. It wasn't a perfect life, but it was ours. And that was enough. Looking back on everything, I still wonder how different things could have been if I had just talked to Linda from the start. If I had asked her about the late nights, the suitcases, the kiss with Mark. But hindsight is a funny thing, it always seems so obvious once you're past the point of no return. What I've learned, though, is that relationships aren't about perfection. They're about resilience. They're about surviving the mess and coming out the other side stronger. And as we cruise across the lake in Mark's mistake, I realize that's exactly what we've done. We survived. And sometimes, that's the best you can hope for.